Today's video is brought to you by DoorDash and Honey. Hey brother! And welcome everyone to our review of Pixar's newest movie, Soul. What'd you think? I really liked it. Yeah? That's all we really had. We, was we really liked it. Should we talk about like existential crisis and what the meaning of life is for the next hour? Yup. I think that's what's coming. <laughs> Okay, Soul comes out on Christmas Day, Disney Plus. First question, did you watch it on Christmas Day? I did not watch it on Christmas Day, oh, but no. I, I did watch it the day after. Day Christmas. after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just a little bit busy on Christmas itself. How, how was the experience doing like the, so we talked about it a little on Mulan when we did the review for that, how it was like, you had to like, buy early access to Mulan on Disney Plus. Which they did not do Which this they time. did not do this time. This one, they just, this is like round three of Disney testing feature stuff. Like how how best to roll out. Right, your movie like on Disney Blockbuster Plus. movies, yeah. yeah, with during this sort of quarantine period of existence that exactly. we're in. Exactly. It's even, it's so interesting too, because it's not like what we're witnessing is marking the future of how movies will be released to us. It's like right. everybody is kind of like in agreement that we are currently living within what will be known as like an in-between period. Like we're, yeah. we're just sort of- Like in the zone. We're in the zone, yeah. Between how, the physical and the spiritual. Does that mean that movies have currently lost their souls oh. by way of not being released in movie theater? The, th the movie theater experience is the soul of a movie, is it not? Probably is it not. the big screen? Maybe the experience. So this was, yeah, so you had Onward, which came out in theaters and then was probably just like <laughs> sliced off because of COVID. It, it was the last movie we saw in yeah. theaters. And that was like a great, like, Disney was like, no problem. We got your back, Disney Plus, for free. Go. Go, go, go. Enjoy. Go, go, go. Yeah. Then they were like, Mulan, what do about this? What do? Make, make pay? Bad move. <laughs> Bad, people not happy. People not happy, largely because Mulan, really not very good. But it'd be one, it'd be curious to know what would have happened if Mulan had been like everyone's new favorite thing. But so now you have Soul where they're just like, okay, screw theaters altogether, <laughs> right to Disney Plus, boom, here you go. Christmas day, you're welcome, Merry Christmas. Right, right. Yeah. And I think it was, it was really a great way to, to cap off the year because it was like without having to like, you know, bury the lead for too long. It was a great movie. Oh. Great movie. This review will contain spoilers if you haven't seen it yet, but I don't know why you'd be watching if you hadn't. Right. Maybe yeah. you're deciding to decide if you should watch it. You should. You should. <laughs> you should. There you go. We haven't spoiled anything yet. Haven't spoiled anything yet. So Other than that, it's good. Yeah, other yeah. than that, it's good and you should watch it. I think actually currently on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 95% critic rating and an 89% audience score. So Seems frankly kind of low. Seems kind of low. I mean. I guess I guess you're right, like a lot of the like Toy Story movies. Yeah, Toy Story's hit like upper 90s. Yeah. It's like mid 90s? Hmm. What even? What on even? On a seven point grading scale, you're like verging on an A minus. Exactly. I, I hated seven point grading scale. We Made don't have no to get sense. into that, but you Made know. No sense. Just, just putting my hot take out there yeah. on that particular one. Especially, especially when other schools weren't on a seven point grading scale and we all had the same GPAs. Like, right. come on. I know. It seems a little unfair. I seriously doubt every single college admissions place is like, well, this person has a 4.0, but this is a 4.0 from a seven point grading school. And right. this one's a 10 point. So, exactly, exactly. You know, they got like, Thousands of, we're not gonna get into it. Should we though? Should I'm, we? I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our review of the college admission system. <laughs> okay, just so kidding. talking about Soul, I think it's a really interesting movie and kind of unique in a couple of ways in that we've sort of discussed this like over coffee ourselves, but like Soul itself as a movie and maybe even Pixar as a studio and what it delivers is typically like a kids movie that can be appreciated by adults. Right, it's like, no one minds bringing their kids to a Pixar movie because you're gonna love it no matter what. Right, and, they, and they've always done a good job of like inserting some humor in there that like that probably goes over your head as a kid, but right. then you like understand it later as an adult and you right. kind of get like a second pass of like, oh, I didn't even notice that before. I just assumed it was just ham saying something. Right. I would say that this movie, Soul, is the opposite of that. I think this is a, it is a movie made for adults that could be appreciated by kids. Yeah, because the messaging is, I would say, 
somewhat, not, I don't want to say like heavy handed, like they're beating you over the head with it, but it is very much the point of the movie. Like the plot itself is really just like this very narrow, thin thing that just threads everything together right. so they can deliver the messaging of the movie and like offer commentary on, you know, the meaning of life. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, Pixar really entering the game. Here's our thesis for the meaning of life. Go. Go. Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy. But you're right. I, mean, I would say that, like, even as I was going to, like, typically whenever we write uh, or prepare for reviews, I will go through and, like, write down all of the characters and sort of, like, yeah. write down, like, my favorite moments, things they did, things that were important, things like that. This particular movie, like, while there are lots of other, like, little characters that kind of, like, come in and out, and very, like, lovable and stuff, yeah. There's, I mean, there's really Joe and 22 are yeah. like, they are really your only like characters. Yeah, more or less. They're the only people who get any like real development or anything. Sure. You know, you have the Jerry's up there who are just sort of like, you know, spouting exposition. You have Terry, who's the villain. The, the accountant. Of. The accountant. Yeah, he sort of serves as this like antagonistic force in the what is it the great before even even terry like he's the bad guy but there is like when he accidentally traps that other guy first he's like you seriously don't eat those processed foods right right, <laughs> right, like, right yeah. he's like yeah no I, I i made a mistake you should keep living he's right. not, like trying to kill people he's just like trying to correct this one mistake which right. is an actual mistake so you i don't know you start to like step into and i thought it was really interesting like a the, manhole cover <laughs> hey -oh. Oh, yeah man. you step into a manhole cover okay let's talk about that though because i actually think this was this was something that maybe I don't know that I completely understood, but Joe is basically dodging death, like the entire walk to and from this audition. Like yeah. he's like stepping out in front of cars. He There's like a like a huge pile of like bricks and a con construction site. And like he immediately walks past like a produce stand with like banana peels, peels all, all over the yeah. ground, followed by like a pile of nails from like a hardware shop next yeah, door. Yeah, like a moped narrowly misses him. Right, so and like- then finally. I don't know if I got that. Like, I don't know if I fully understand. And not that I don't think that there is is meaning behind it. I just don't right. know that it may have gone over my head. You know, I hadn't thought to really consider it, but I'm glad we sort of talked about the movie ahead of time. I guess my take on the fly is going to be for why he's like dodging death in all these situations is that the overall commentary is that Joe is too focused on his passions. He's more concerned with the act of perform like doing jazz than like being passionate about jazz and like I don't know it's more about like having done the jazz than doing the jazz you know what sure. I mean so, well yeah but, well I think you're right though because it's like as as a musician as this person it's like the idea I think ultimately and what we kind of see is like he he wants the stage to perform on he wants the ability to like have achieved maybe some level of like notoriety or like right. respect amongst peers. But like, I think that what that means and what you ultimately see is that he gets that opportunity. He plays in front of people and he does feel like a little like empty inside. Like I thought yeah. I would feel thought fulfilled. Would feel and I think the idea behind that is that like, if you find your passion in music, then maybe you're not supposed to need that stage in order to like be enjoying playing your music. Like you should be yeah. feeling the passion just by doing it. Right, so I wrote this down because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to do it. I said, it's not the act of doing things you're passionate about, it's the act of experiencing the passion. Oh, I really like how you have that phrase. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you have just delivered a line where they could like put like, you know, Jonathan Carlin. Right there. there. Yeah. Quote, Jay Carlin. Jay Carlin. That's me right there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's sort of what's happening is that like in the beginning, Joe is so concerned about like getting this gig and like fulfilling his life's purpose. He is like missing like obvious red flags and danger abound. Right. Like, he is not like, maybe it's like a, a physical representation of the dangers of like failing to recognize your passion in the moment or pursuing your passion past the point of happiness and I guess sort of becoming like a, a lost soul. Right, well, and so that was yeah. gonna be my next question. So it's like passion blindness almost a little bit where it's Ooh, like you're so- Passion blindness. You're so aggressively following yes. your passion that you forgot to enjoy anything. Right. They actually ultimately do show us, so you're sort of in like the, like this sort of like semi wasteland type of space where mm -hmm. instead of having the souls to be, which are all bright and colorful, you have these like kind of dark, ominous, monster depressed creatures. monster yeah. creatures like that are roaming about. Very Pete Doctor monsters. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we're led to believe is that that is a place where people who are still living 
their souls could be up there because they're like lost souls. Yeah. That's correct. So that is yeah. that is who inhabits this wasteland effectively. Well, so there's two kinds of souls in the wasteland. You have the people in the zone. Okay. And then you have the people who have gone like past the zone and lost their way. Mo Moonwind, is that? Moonwind. Moonwind says when joy becomes an obsession, one becomes disconnected from life. So yes. these are people who have like, they found joy playing music or whatever, but now they have become so focused on it and like it's the only thing they're like doing that they have like lost focus on all other things and they're not even getting joy from the music anymore. It's just- This, yeah. I mean, it's really interesting because it seems like this idea of joy, like I, I don't know if even where, I feel like it was like Marie Kondo, like has- oh, this, Sparks joy. Sparks joy. Well, like the whole the whole idea of like, uh, as you're tidying your home effectively, it's like, mm -hmm. does this bring you joy? And if not, you don't need it. And I feel like that mm -hmm. resonated with all people. Like yeah. at, at this point in time, it's almost like a buzzword to say like, to ask the question like, does it bring you joy? Yeah. And it's it's interesting to me that this is like this great big challenge that like all of us as a society seem to be facing. It's like so many people seem lost from their ability to find joy. Right, it's like if I could just, if I had that thing, would that make me happy? Or if I like accomplished that thing, would I be happy? It's like you're like, chasing it right in a way it's actually one of the line i just read too reminded me a lot very much of basically the plot of inside out right sort of like the one sentence plot of inside out which is also a pete doctor movie uh which you know examines the human experience because I mean, pete's getting deep he is getting these, deep with he these is movies getting deep. but in that movie the literal manifestation of joy becomes obsessed with riley experiencing joy and as a result uh exactly like he says Riley becomes disconnected from life and, you know, shuts down completely. Exactly, right. Yeah. And that's what you have is Joy, the character who is so aggressively chasing Joy that like she's like literally moved beyond Riley's ability to even experience it anymore. Exact man. Yeah. Man, Inside Out is such a good metaphor for soul. It is, it is. <laughs> well, and I think there's so much to that too, because throughout the movie of Soul, and especially when you have 22 living inside of Joe's body, yeah. throughout <clears throat> the experience of, of moving through the city and like, tasting pizza and like watching the leaves fall and like listening yeah. and hearing these things. 22 is collecting these like little items. Little mementos. Little yeah. mementos. And I like at the end, I feel like the, uh, Joe ultimately spreads them across his piano and he's like looking at all of these things. And I feel like they were again, going back to like inside out, they each one could represent like sort of the personality islands mm -hmm. that you had in Inside Out. Like right. we were talking about the specific things that like food, this is the type of thing that can like make one of my islands like come to life, Right. you know, or just like observing nature or family, like because they took like the little spool of thread. Right. You know, it's like, so you've got all of these like little markers that They're I feel all like little markers from when 22 observed other people experiencing their passion. Like anytime she sees someone doing that, that's when she like grabs something. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And all of that, of course, then like what we see is, you know, those those things, like witnessing those things, you sort of get this differentiation between the idea of your spark and your purpose, which is like a very big discussion throughout the, the entire movie. movie. So like, yeah. of course, you know, Joe has sort of got this mission with 22 to like help her find her spark so that she's able to get the earth passed so that she can give it to him so that she can bypass life altogether or whatever. And so they're like, well, what what could that be? Yeah. And they start referring to it as your purpose. Right. And I think that from Joe's perspective, you know, he would have seen jazz playing music, being a musician as his like purpose. As his purpose. I mean, you think he says that out loud. Word for word. Word yeah. for word, yeah. And so it, I think even that is like this really interesting, I don't know, way to way to look at things where it's like, your spark is not your purpose. Right. It's like your spark is the thing that like makes you want to live. Exactly. It's, I mean, it's uh, it's very much like what they say in Wally, where it's like the captain's like, I don't want to survive. I want to live. Right. Which is like the, the constant messaging from Pixar. Right. Um, that like so, the more you, the more you like really get into the movies, like oh, I it's like why do toys want love from <clears throat> their their kids? So they can live. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, my favorite one of my favorite lines in the whole movie. Actually, Beth and I watched this on Christmas Day, and of course it was a super long day, so I fell asleep okay. for like 15, How dare you? 15 minutes of crucial movie time. I had to go back and rewatch it. But in that time, I was rewatching it. It was like probably my favorite line is when uh, Joe was talking to one of the Jerry's, and he said, we never found out what 22's purpose was. And he looks at him with this just like, uh, the way they animated the utter bewilderment on the Jerry's face where he goes, we don't assign purposes. Where'd you get that idea? 
Right, right, right. like, what, huh? I can't even, I don't even know where on, where, where you even pulled that word from. Right. Like, like it's so forward, uh, it's such a good delivery on the line and the animation. I was where like, it's like, where he's like so massively like misunderstood the yeah. whole point of it. Yeah, well it's just like, the, yeah, like where, yeah, not only has Joe misunderstood it, but Jerry is having trouble realizing like where this question even came from. Sure. It's like, what do you mean? Ants can lift twice their own weight and ice cream tastes great. Like what did the, what what does one have to do with the other? Right, like that's that's the you know feel that's the expression I got from it. The like, inc what? incredulity. Yeah, I loved that line because that really I mean that like sums up the whole. Although that thought. being said, though one of the things I thought was was kind of interesting, and, and maybe this is the difference between like what your spark is and what your personality <laughs> is and stuff. Because one of the things that they talk about is like, did you think you were like created your personalities once you were born? Like it's like. What they were suggesting is like your personalities are like innately part of your soul. Yeah. So like while they're up there, they're like, uh-huh, the, these souls will be like aloof. Yeah. <laughs> and they all kind of come out with like that, like, yeah. like who could even care look. <laughs> I love the one who's like, I'm a really ambitious megalomaniac. <laughs> yeah, who is that supposed to be? I know, right? Who is that soul? Uh, Syndrome. Mm, Although this keep is- Keep track of things like time in a place like this. It's true, Yeah, it's true. And I do think that there is an argument for theory making that time is completely irrelevant to uh, when these souls are dropping in versus- mm. Mm, There's probably an argument for that. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Although, that said, 22 must be freaking ancient. Must be. Must yeah, be. because I mean, you're talking about, so literally, I even think it was really funny the way that they did this was they had like, the first soul that came out for their mentor was soul number 108 billion whatever. Yeah. And the next soul that comes out for their mentor is 22. <laughs> right. And, and you're immediately like, oh wow, wow. Well, yeah. Like, like, you've been here a while. Yeah, like you, like 22, you're one of the first souls, basically. Right. If that's how they're doing this. Right. Which is how I'm assuming they are, because it seems like they keep count of everything really well. Oh, do you know what? When he comes out and he's like, the count is off, they're like, I doubt that. Do they reference that the count has been off before? They said, the, the, yeah, actually, yeah. Mm. This is like in my like script no, that's, that like, that's like folder. theory, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the, was the count off? <laughs> the count hasn't been off for centuries, and it's like, percent, well, when was the last off? One thing we find joy in is writing theories, uh, and yes. I think it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a lot of fun, and yeah. like piecing together. You know, who was twenty two? Oh, who was twenty two? That's like the ultimate question from the movie, and the ultimate not the point, but right, right. <laughs> but right, it's right. like, oh, but if you think we're not gonna try and answer it, well, you'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta happen. It's gotta happen. It's gotta happen. Yeah, that's where the whole time is irrelevant argument really helps. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Yeah. It can be. You, you can blow it wide open. Here's the other thing. Time. You see them like diving towards the earth, you think like, how remarkably okay was Joe with like skydiving? He, I, think he he was his, I think he missed his passion. Yeah, right? He was just fine with it. He did it so many times. So many times, so he just kept times. going. Yeah, plus he fell through that whole crazy void thing at the beginning. Presumably he kept falling through it because he kept coming out of the same little roof. Right, right, yeah. 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 But so like, okay, so the, the way they have the, like the, the earth that's facing up when 22 jumps down has like a big, you know, tar bullseye on Asia. Okay. But it seemed, to me, it's like, can you only land on the side that's facing the hole? No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't I th think so either. I, it, it even seems like, and I can't tell for sure, like the way that they're all dropping in. It almost seems like they're they're like they're kind of coming in like this and then go. That's that was sort of the way I saw it. Yeah, as if they were like immediately like falling almost into like orbit. Yeah, because otherwise the planet itself would literally have like a line where people were being born. Right. Like as the earth rotated, it'd be like, hmm, only people within this 12 hour range, like people just are being born only okay. right here. Okay, okay, but what if that was a real world discovery and they were like, whoa, how has nobody ever noticed this before? That would be, very, be That would be mind blowing. That would be very mind blowing, but I don't think that's the case. It's because we all live in a simulation. That's really what I took away from this. Yeah? Yeah. What you got from it? That's <laughs> that was your main takeaway from Soul? No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I just keep coming back to it. Okay. It doesn't really matter if we are or aren't. We're still here. We're still here. That's a good point. Yeah, so I, I think overall, like this movie, it's like a great movie to get you to think. Oh yeah. It's it's really interesting. I feel like I've had a lot of conversations with people about it and sort mm -hmm. of like what their reactions were to it. I think it's gonna be very interesting to like, yeah, see, see how it does affect people or like in what way that it potentially could affect people. Yeah. Like I love the idea of this movie actually being able to serve as a as like a moment or oh, as a spark not to be too on the nose there. My nose actually itched as I said that. Wow. Which I feel like it's like- Weird. It was Did you like, need to yawn too? Are you trying to make me yawn? I'm trying to make you yawn. yawn. That's a thing. If you just <laughs> keep like, saying yawn. How many people at home have just yawned? 
Because of the word yawn. Because of it. If you keep saying it, I bet some people did. Little comment if you yawned. <laughs> we are totally off the tracks. We are totally off the tracks. Oh man, train of Which thought. feels like a really good time. Oh no. Okay, I have to. Oh. It's, it's that time. I, I gotta go. do it. Mm-hmm. Guys, on. time for the scenic round. Well, it would appear I've been left alone again. But uh, I guess I may as well tell you about today's sponsor. Honey. Okay, so these days, I don't know about you guys, but I find myself doing a lot of my shopping online and Honey has been a real game changer in terms of saving money. Honey is really simple. It's just a browser extension. And whenever you're checking out from pretty much any website and there's a little spot where you can put in a promo code, it will scour the entire internet, like the whole thing real quick, no problem. And just test all available promo codes to see if any of them work. And if they do, you save money. And it is like super easy to set up. It takes like, Two clicks, click, click, you're done. And what's great is you can just set it and forget it. And then whenever you're checking out, it'll just pop up and be like, hey, would you like me to test some codes? And you'd be like, ugh, yeah. And then you wait a few seconds, just like this. It does have to scan the whole internet after all. But then if it finds any, it applies the best codes to your cart. It is seriously just a no brainer. Like it just lives in the background. And if it can save you money, it will. And if it can't find any codes, well, then you're back where you started anyway. In my personal experience, the number one thing I use Honey for is pizza. Because let me tell you, you should never be paying full price for pizza. There are five zillion promo codes out there all over the place at all times for pizza. And no matter, I've, I've saved like 15 to $20 on pizza orders before you guys. Bottom line is this, if you have a computer, Honey should be on it because it can affect your bottom line. And you can get it today for free at joinhoney.com slash J B. Again, that is joinhoney.com slash J B. Link is in the description down below. And thanks to Honey for supporting today's video. Hello and welcome to the scenic route with Jay talking about ordering pizza. Okay. But let me tell you about today's other sponsor, DoorDash. DoorDash is actually perfect for today because like always, I'm starving, but the good news is I can fix it in a jiffy. Seriously, it's this easy. Just hang on one second. Yeah. Just open the DoorDash app. One giant pretzel, please. And it's on its way! Full disclosure, I wasn't actually pushing any buttons on the phone just now, but it really is that easy. You see, DoorDash is the app that brings the food you are craving right now, right to your door. This door, in fact. Well, maybe not that exact door, but it'll look similar. Maybe. And with over 300,000 partners in their network, you can order anything from your favorite local go-tos to nationwide chains like Chipotle, Wendy's, or the Cheesecake Factory. And DoorDash deliveries are contact-free, keeping the members of your community safe. It's easy, fast, and a great way to support your favorite local restaurants. And best of all, it's here. Oh my gosh, here we go, here we go. Totally not telling Jay about this. And guys, right now you can get $5 off your first order of $15 or more and free deliveries when you go to the DoorDash app and use promo code J versus B at checkout. Again, that is going to be $5 off your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and use promo code J versus B at checkout. $5 off your DoorDash order when you use code J versus B. Link in the description down below. And I'm back. Mm-hmm. I hope you had a good trip. Like always. Yeah. All right. So we were talking about Sparks. We were and talking about Sparks. Yeah. You know what I was really trying to do? I was trying to leave a, a good quality tease. And we talked about yawns. Then we did the scenic route. And then you yeah. did your thing. And now we're back. Now we're back. Look, we barely even missed a beat. We barely missed a beat. Okay. So my question, though, is that, that I, at least I would like to pose is, is there any chance that a movie like this can like change lives. Oh, I mean, I don't see why that couldn't be the case for any movie. I know. But I, I do know what you mean. Like this movie in particular seems to have a mission to get people to like wake up. Right, like I mean, I think that this from is the something- From the simulation. From the simulation, exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, I feel like this is something that it, it feels like as, as, as like a society that we live in, there's like high depression rates, mm -hmm. like, that, like that people struggle with like finding joy just in, you know, everyday life and it, stuff like it, that. It, there is like an overwhelming amount of like, sounds weird, like pressure to be happy. Yeah. Like, what do you have to be sad about? Right, like when, when like yeah. everything is so, so yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Well, 
coming out of 2020. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a good point. In general. Right, but in general. I mean, and I think that that's, that's interesting. Like, is is there like a way to start? Like, could it like, I mean, to start like a revolution sounds like a very like, what is his name from Ragnarok? Thor? Not that, yeah. <laughs> I remember him. Yeah. Uh, that guy? Korg? Korg! Yeah. Yeah. Like, a, you know, like a Korg kind of revolution uh -huh. where, where people like, you know, see life in like a whole new way though. Right. Like, cause I feel like the, the soul effect. The soul effect. Yeah. The soul effect of the soul movie. Yeah. Yeah. Is like the, the realization or like the ambition or the drive. Like, what would you do? You know, or are you already doing it? I, th I mean, I like to think I'm already doing it. You're like, like I mean, I really like doing the YouTubes, but I also feel like it's not like overwhelming my every moment at all times. And hopefully I can like recognize the happy moments when they're happening. I think a lot about this when I do the vlog. Okay. It was like, I do this and I really love doing this. This is super fun and sure. awesome. Yeah, cause and we can do it together. Yeah, we can do it together. Yeah, yeah. Get to watch movies, like get part. to experience all the things I really like. But also then I've had like my little side vlog project where like, I just get to sit there and like focus on the things that like my family and like the other parts of my life that aren't always this. Sure, and sure. Although, and this is, I think I always end up catching myself because there's always these times when I am like experiencing something really great in the moment. And I think like, oh, should I film this? Because this would be great for the vlog. But then I'm also like, if I film it, then it takes me like out of the moment. Like, sure. should I just let the present be? And th there is always sort of like this like line where I'm like, I just want to let, I just want to play with my kids right now. Or, sure. you know, what, whatever it is like this, this is just for me. Right. Kind of thing. Get introspective here. I know. Well, but. I mean, but that's, I think this is the thing. Like, and I knew we were going to struggle with this as we were coming into this, this review is that like, there's not much to talk about with the plot of the movie. Like the plot of the movie is like, it's easy to describe. It's like, yeah. a, it's like a three sentence thing. Right. So I feel like what you really have to talk about and to really do the movie justice, I think you have to talk about this impact because I think this is like my favorite thing about the movie soul is, mm -hmm is the messaging. Yeah. It is like the ideas that come from it. And it's and it's assessing things like this, or maybe even like hoping that people will look at their, you know, their islands of personality. So like for you with the vlog, it's yeah. this thing where you've got like the realization that like so much joy does come and so much like fulfillment comes from like spending that time, right? you know, with family and like realizing like, hey, like that, that island is firing right now. Right. And I think maybe there's like a little bit of, it's almost like how like if you smile more, it can like just make you happier. Oh, made a video about that too. Right, yeah. The idea being that the personality islands, you spending time with your family, the recognition and application of like, this is like, this is one of those moments. And it's like the idea of smiling more to become a happier person. It's like maybe, maybe giving notice to those moments when they happen just long enough for them to like roll on their own. Yeah. Like I think eventually like you don't need to like pay recognition to that idea. You will just genuinely be enjoying yourself. Mm -hmm. But it almost feels like maybe that's where like the train came off the tracks at some point in time for a lot of people in like the way that they're navigating through life right now is like they've, they've stopped paying attention to those things. And, like right. fully embracing them and like realizing like this is a good moment. Yeah. Like got to embrace that, got to right. enjoy that. It's like just being present basically being present like i it's like there you you're feeling pressure to enjoy everything which is keeping you from enjoying things exactly yeah yeah it's highly go. complicated <clears throat> yeah yeah oh easter eggs did you find any easter eggs when you were watching i had the luxo ball luxo and ball the pizza planet truck oh you found the pizza planet truck i did oh yes that's fun yes where uh, was it it is inside of the hall of everything <clears throat> oh that makes sense yeah it's just like over there it's just it's just off to the side it's like it's like right here right there yeah the the luxo ball is so fun it was all black and white yeah right? yeah yeah because yeah. like it was the, like in in the, just the box or whatever <laughs> just a <the> box <laughs> don't, I, don't I, come in here just a box just a box i feel like there's so much to be talked about with just the box like yeah. why that's allowed to exist at all i know is like it seems like they know about it because like when 22 doesn't show up for the u seminar they go into the other dimension they go, yeah she's like oh, come i'm gonna come down there right right <laughs> yeah. right but is that where they go is into the box. I assume that's where when she was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was in the box. Okay. Just the box. I also seems like a portal to the zone. <laughs> portal to the zone. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So yeah. and it also seems like there's a lot of things inside of the box, which yeah. I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. Because like, why does 22 have things 
in the box? That's true. And where did they come from? Where did the and how the were they selected? From? Because if any of those things meant anything to 22, then- Well, like, she's got at least, what, like six aspects of her personality figured out. True. Right, which I didn't pause when she's like showing him the unfilled earth badge and they are all hilarious. It's like a megaphone for like being really loud. It's just like a thumbs down and like a rainy day. <laughs> it's just like the most negative badge. Oh my gosh. Ever. Also, I loved how they completely threw shade at Tina Fey. Oh yes, like, like, why do you sound like a middle-aged white woman? <laughs> like, right. I just do this was to annoy people. Well, it's working. <laughs> it's like. I feel like, did she come up with that? Oh yes, <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah, it's so Tina Fey to be like very self-deprecating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's see what else. Oh, I had Easter eggs. Oh yeah, 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 give yeah. me your Easter eggs. So there's a 2319 on subway car when he's like the guy's playing the guitar in the subway. Subway rolls up and like on the train, it's a big old 2319. Interesting. I know. I didn't see that because Pete Doctor is also Monsters. Monsters Inc. Yeah. Which is where 2319 <clears throat> comes from. Yeah. 2319. Um, I did not find a 113 which Monsters, Inc. also famously does not have. Ooh. Uh, I did not hear John Ratzenberg. Mm. John Ratzenberg does not voice a character in this movie. However, plot twist, they animated him into it. So he is a passenger on the subway and I did see that. What? Yes. Crazy. Standing. Yeah, so that was pretty Whoa. good. That was a pretty good one. That, like, it's Whoa. like, okay, 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 see okay. There. I, I have heard and I don't know this, this so I, I, this is me going secondhand yeah. at, the, at this very moment, off the cuff, off. so to speak. Yeah. A113 is like someone plays an A note on the piano and the hertz like attached to it oh. is 113 hertz. Wow, that is deep cut. It is deep cut, Man. but when, we, when it comes to like Monsters Inc, we have looked for uh, like forever for anything. Like yeah. anything where it's like, okay, anything. when you add up like those 17 numbers, you get 113 and the number before it is, you know, like. Yeah, people keep sending us things. It's no not one, there. No one's got it. No, no one's, one's got no it. No one's got it. So <clears throat> mm -hmm. Pixar fashion is Pixar. to make you cry. Yeah, especially Pete Doctor. Especially Pete Doctor. Yeah. It's like when Sully leaves Boo and. Yep. Inside Out got me like six times. Oh, Inside Out, their group hugs and their bing, bong. bing bongs and. Uh, up, oh yeah, the, the, you know, the first like whole 10 minutes of the movie. Yep. I'm like, oh my God. Yep, completely heart-wrenching. <laughs> so the question becomes, did Soul make you cry? Oh, I got, I was, you know, I was surprised because as we said, the plot itself is, is not really seems like the point of the movie right. per se. So I'm not, I wasn't like super attached to like Joe himself. He's just sort of like the, the medium through which they're delivering their message. Right. However, there was, like a moment where he's like sitting at the piano and he's like examining all 22's little mementos and like reliving her moments and then also reliving all like his little like moments of uh, like passion in life. Right, uh, like the, what are, I forget what they call it, but it's like in the beginning when he is supposed to be like Bjorn Bjorgensen yeah. or whatever, and they're like walking through and they're like, this isn't really my life. And he like pulls off his life. Yeah. And you see all the, what are supposed to be the highlights basically of Joe's life right. based on Joe. Yeah, like the curated, moments of his life. So right. put your life into a museum. Boom, just fun idea. I can't uh, even imagine. That makes me feel very exposed. I know, oh, <laughs> oh so good, this is very personal. As he's going through that, I wasn't really, it like caught me off guard how emotional that scene was making me. Cause I, I don't know, it was like, uh, just, I don't know, it was like, it made me like think about those moments. Like what would yours yeah, be? Yeah, like what would mine be? Or like, oh yeah, yeah, like he's really having this big moment with, his family right here is standing on the beach with his mom. There's one where he takes a bite of pecan pie that really stood out to me because it feels like it comes out of left field. But it was well, like, he's like, I don't know, he's like so present in that moment. Like how good must have that pie tasted? I know. To like it, stand out. And I think it's interesting too, because when you see it in the beginning, I feel like you're, you're seeing a moment through the wrong lens. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost maybe supposed to be like, it's meant to be sad, not emotionally, but sad, kind of like pathetic, I feel like, mm -hmm. where like one of the key moments of, of his life is literally sitting at a diner by himself. And you're right. kind of like, it's like, uh, that was a highlight? Like, yeah. you know, like, that doesn't, seem, that doesn't seem right. But then like later when you get to experience that moment with him, like from the memories perspective, mm -hmm. what you're actually seeing is like, it makes me think that like one of his uh, islands of personality or whatever could be like food. Yeah. Uh, and like, that's like this big thing was like, it was like, that was his best, bite you know like yeah. and that that's like a cool thing to think about you yeah know? it's like what was the best bite you ever had and hard to think about 
It would be hard to think about. But like, I, I mean, they're <clears throat> ranked somehow, some way, there must be that moment. Yeah. And it would be interesting even if like, even if it was a moment you couldn't remember, if 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 when the day ever came, you got to go into this room, you get to like relive it. And like, that was it. You this get to go my back. best bite of food. Like, God, Pop Rocks were so great. <laughs> I hope that wasn't your best bite. <laughs> It just was, a, Jay, it was a, it was a sp- I, I had saved up so many <clears throat> packets of Pop Rocks, put them all in one spoon, punched it in. Right there. I'm still popping a little bit. Still popping. That'd be weird. It was three, days, three like, days ago. <laughs> that was it. Peak. <laughs> it was recent. Peak. <laughs> it was recent. It was from the Harry Potter candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. <clears throat> it's on this very table. It's on this table. You uh, witnessed it. Yeah. That'd be depressing. That would be. That would be. I would say mediocre candy across the board. Yeah, pretty much. But okay, so that's interesting. So that like some of those moments. So it was both the bite and then also sort of like the semi like i don't even know if vicarious is the right word but like you experiencing or thinking about yeah some of like those moments yeah like what are what are my moments in this vein kind right of thing and also like despite not really maybe like super connecting to the characters there was this idea that he pretty much decides to give up his life for 22 which like the deepness of it i was sort of like like hit me like right in the moment where like 22 does not exist. Right. You know, like they literally call it a hypothetical, like where they are. Right. You know, and it, you know, it'd be super easy for Joe to be like, well, that was a weird dream, you know, to like brush it aside. But he decides to like give up his life for this hypothetical existence. Like he has no idea who 22 is going to become. Right. You know, right. Or right what right. that's yeah. going to mean. It's, it's not <clears throat> like, it's not like he is going and interacting with a like maybe highly <clears throat> cynical, like, cancer patient child who is also sort of going through this like myriad of things and like one of them gets to go and who, right. who decides or whatever. Like, yeah, you're right. It's it's not like there is there is like proof in the pudding in terms of like who this person is or they have more life to live or more whatever to yeah. experience. It's literally just like a hypothetical existence. Right. And he he's like, go, give right. me a go. And, and so it's interesting that, yeah, that you bring that up. Cause I would say the, the moment that probably got me the most is Joe continuously, you know, keeps jumping towards earth and you have like all these moments where he just keeps like plopping back into the hypothetical. Yeah. But the, the last time that he does jump like with 22 is like one of, I think is the <coughs> moment that got me the most. Oh yeah. It's just sort of like, you know, them together, like him doing the jump, like going for it. I don't, I don't know why it was so emotional or like what it even would have like brought back for me, mm-hmm. but I think it's it's always just sort of this thought of like someone almost making like their full priority like you. Right. And that's like something that seems super meaningful. Right, and again, in that like sense that you is nobody. I know, I know, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. It is weird. It is weird. It's like a weird avenue the movie takes you down. It's right. Like, I'm a nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Get it? So yeah, but I mean, it was, I don't know. It's been, Soul has been a really fun movie. I, I did love it for reasons that are so different from other reasons why I've loved other movies before. Yes. But I, I would give it a very high score. Can't, I mean, I, even this morning I was watching it again, just like I had it on in like my bedroom as I was like getting dressed, you mm-hmm. know, just to sort of like pick up on like little moments or try to like give it like that second pass, like really take it in. Right. I do think it's a movie that like the more, the more I watch it, the more I'll learn. And probably the more I watch it, the more I discuss it. I think even just the better person I will be. Ooh. Which this, I, movie, this movie makes you a better person. That's what I'm saying. Wow, okay, that's, I think yeah. so. Okay. I think so. So do you have like do you have a rating? I know someone keeps track of the ratings. We do. I think I would give it a 93. 93. 93. And you know what? I know earlier I said I couldn't believe it wasn't higher on Rotten Tomato, but I think I would just give it a 95 anyway. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so on a seven point I grading think, scale, I think people enjoyed it more than me, but I agree. 95. Right. right. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Um, and I think that like, yeah, really what it, what it comes down to is it's, it may, maybe it's the only points lost would maybe be just like, the movie's impact is 100% there, but was my, was my like moment as I was watching it, was it like, was it like a fully enthralled or was it more of like a delay effect? Mm-hmm. It's almost like a, like a wine that has like a strong finish. You ah, know? Oh, like, oh, wow. Okay, you know, yeah. Very hoity toity. Uh, okay. Yeah. Great nose. Great palette, mm-hmm. excellent finish. All right, this yeah. has been uh, the Soul Review with Bougie Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have that like personality, Bougie Ben? <clears throat> uh, that's, yeah, we could explore that. Probably maybe on the pop, you know? Okay, 
Sounds okay. like we have you know Buzzy B and then Bougie Ben. Bougie Ben. That's yeah. my, my two different personalities. <laughs> there you go. Let my me get in the Bougie Ben corner. <laughs> You've got like Buzzy Ben who's like all about them bees. Yeah. You know, harvesting, pollinating, honey. Yeah. Literal bees we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. Versus versus like bougie. Yeah. Which is all about like honey. <laughs> exactly. And bees that's where you get like pollinating. That's like hot honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into super high quality honeys. Yeah. That's my thing. Meads. <laughs> Meads, yeah. Made from honey. Okay, well, guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning into this review. Let us know what you thought of Soul in the comment section down below. Uh, and let us know if you yawn, because let's face it, you did. I, I feel like one's coming on a little bit myself right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Also, stay tuned. Uh, later this week, we're gonna have how does Soul fit into the Pixar theory? It's got to. It does. That's the fun of the Pixar theory. That's the fun of the Pixar theory. It always fits. It always fits. It always fits. Or we'll make it fit. Yeah. If you guys want to get caught up on the rest of the Pixar theory, before we talk about how soul fits into it, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, until next time, bye. bye.